choice of penguins walking the Indian streets, Ved Mehta. Ved Mehta's vivid and perceptive account of his return to India after 10 years in England and America is now established as a classic of its kind, of one man's attempt to re-identify himself with a homeland in which he no longer felt at home. His prose has a swift, subtle, gliding quality that can capture a character or a scene with amazing force and brevity. Books and Bookmen India A Wounded Civilization vs Nepal What Nepal saw and heard after three visits to India reinforced his conviction, first expressed in an area of darkness that India, wounded by a thousand years of foreign rule, has yet to find an ideology of regeneration. There can be no doubt of Nepal's skill and power, a beautiful economy and sharpness of perception, the Times literary supplement, a matter of honor, an account of the Indian army, its officers and men, Philip Mason, an important contribution to the study of the British adventure in India, a book rich in detail, compassion and understanding, Shiva Nepal and a new statesman. From the time of Clive and the conflict with the French until the blood-soaked days of partition in 1947, British power in India was guaranteed by an army recruited in large part from the people it held in thrall. Dwelling sometimes on a campaign, sometimes on an episode from a battle, sometimes on the story of one regiment or one man, Philip Mason carries forward the story of the army's development in successive scenes of colorful variety. He shows how the Indian and British concepts of honor and duty coincided to produce, against all odds, a highly professional military order which was the equal of any in the world. The Great Mutiny, India, 1857, Christopher Hibbert By far the best single volume description of the mutiny you had written, Economist. A good book can always be expected from Christopher Hibbert, but this time he has excelled himself. Sunday Telegraph, a first-rate book, well-researched, Beautifully written and so exciting that I had difficulty in laying it down. Philip Magnus in the Sunday Times. Raj, a scrapbook of British India, 1877-1947. Charles Allen, here is a nostalgic and affectionate portrait in both words and pictures of life in the great years of the British Raj, of the world of dark bungalows, cold weather tours, governor's camps, orders of proceedings, Fancy dress balls and calling cards of whalers, hogspears, trophies, rocky chairs, bedding rolls, and soda water machines. It offers a fresh and wholly original approach to the Anglo-Indian experience and an invaluable historical record of a vanished age. A History of India 1. Romila Thapar The first volume of this history traces the evolution of India before contact with modern Europe was established in the 16th century. Professor Topper's account of the development of India's social and economic structure is arranged with a framework of the principal political and dynastic events. Her narrative covers some 2,500 years of India's history from the establishment of Aryan culture in about 1000 BC to the coming of the Mughals in AD 1526 and the first appearance of European trading companies. In particular, she deals, interestingly, with the many manifestations of Indian culture as seen in religion, art, and literature, in ideas and institutions. In the second volume of A History of India, Dr. Percival Spear handles the Mughal and British periods. Hindu Holiday, J.R. Ackley. He wanted someone to love him, His Highness, I mean. He alleged other reasons, of course, an English private secretary, a tutor for his son. He wanted a friend. He wanted understanding and sympathy and philosophic comfort, and he sent to England for them. Thus it was that J.R. Ackley found himself cast in a demanding role as companion to the Maharaja of Chokrapur in the 1920s. Hindu Holiday is the journal he kept of his experiences. Marvelously observed and extremely funny, it extracts the irony, absurdity, and force of life in India as well as the dignity and richness of an ancient culture. His humor is a humor of pity and love. He is an artist in understanding, V.S. Pritchett. The Seventh Gate, Peter Reeve. One of the most remarkable books about life in India ever to have been written gives a picture of different aspects of Indian life in a way that Kipling would have been proud of. David Holloway in the Daily Telegraph. The masterful account of childhood and youth in India during the 20s suddenly and harshly blighted by leprosy. Classic novels about India and penguins. All about Edge Hatter. 
G. V. Dasani. H. Hatzer is an engagingly shrewd, naive Anglo Indian seeking wisdom from the seven sages of India. It proves a punishing process. He is robbed and hid by Puka muggers, falls foul of dubious swamis, falls for frustrating, rosy of the riding wishes, carnal to the core, and experiences much else what wouldn't normally bear talking about in one's autobiographical. All About Edge Hatter first appeared in 1948 and was greeted with rare enthusiasm by T.S. Eliot and many other distinguished critics. It then inexplicably went underground to emerge 20 years later as a modern classic that defies classification. A Passage to India, E.M. Forster that Marabar case was an event which threw the city of Chandipur into a fever of racial feeling. Miss Quest on a visit from England to the man she expected to marry showed an interest in Indian ways of life which was frowned upon by the sun-baked British community and the prejudice which most of them felt and expressed against any social contacts between the British and the Indians appeared at first to be justified when, when she returned alone and distressed from an excursion to the caves in the company of a young Indian doctor. He was arrested on a charge of attempted assault, but when the case came to trial, Miss Quested withdrew her accusation and the doctor was set free. Was she the victim of an hallucination, a complex and unidentified intruder or what? In this dramatic story, E.M. Forster depicts with sympathy and discernment the complicated oriental reaction to British rule in India and reveals the conflict of temperament and tradition involved in that relationship. Anita Desai in Penguins, a selection, Fire on the Mountain. Nanda Kaul has chosen to spend her last years in peace, high up in the mountains. Her great-grandchild comes to join her. A thin, fragile, secretive girl whose intrusion Nandakal deeply resents. But this child has a capacity to change things and Nandakal discovers new needs deep inside herself. When the violence explodes, as it always will, Nandakal faces the truth. Beautifully accomplished and memorable by any standards, I admired it unreservedly. Susan Hill in the Times. Clear light of the day. Nominates for the Booker McConnell. Price, 1980. To the family living in the shabby, dusty house in Delhi, Tara's visit brought a sharp reminder of life outside the traditional pattern. For Bim, coping endlessly with their problems, there is a renewal of the old jealousies, for she has failed to escape like her sister. But escape to what? Anita Desai adroitly focused on the tensions of life in a changing society. Her subtle and cleverly observed book skillfully pulls together past and present to reveal in small, preoccupations and minute shifts of feeling a larger, bigger world. She's good. Susan Hill, a fine achievement observer. Ruth Praveer Jhabwala in Penguins, a selection. One questions whether any Western writer has had a keener, cooler understanding of the temperament of urban India, Guardian. A writer of genius, a writer of world class, a master storyteller, Sunday Times. Someone once said that the definition of the highest art is that one should feel that life is this and not otherwise. I do not know of a writer living who gives that feeling with more unqualified certainty than Mrs. Jabala, C.P. Snow. Get ready for battle. In a series of wittily observed scenes, Ruth Jabala draws a sharp and perceptive yet always compassionate portrait of a middle class family life in contemporary Delhi through a group of people who are all ready for battle with each other and themselves. But beneath the ironies, the personal problems and conflicts, we catch a glimpse of India's terrifying social problems and also of the deep moral consciousness which may prove her salvation. A backward place. The trouble with Bal was not his lack of ideas but the fact that they tended to be rather grand, long-term visions whereas his life was organized on a decidedly short-term basis. And for Judy's English wife, Etta, the aging, sophisticated, Clarissa, the upper middle class dropout from the English establishment, the worthy Hogstad on a two year exchange visit, and all the other characters who figure in this enchanting novel, India always poses a host of contradictions. R.K. Narayan in Penguins, a selection. The man eater of Malvidi. Nataraj, owner of a small, friendly printing press in the enchanted city of Malvidi, has never been very successful at making enemies, until that is, he meets Vasu. Almost accidentally, Vasu, a pugnacious taxidermist, moves into Nataraj's attic, bringing an alarming stuffed jungle of hyenas, pythons, and tigers, 
and an assortment of dancing girls that clump up and down the printer's private stairs. Vasu is definitely not a man to tangle with, but when, in search of bigger game, he threatens the beloved temple elephant, Nataraj rises to the occasion and Narayan invests it with all his warm, wicked and delightful sense of comedy. Connoisseurs have known for years that the city of Mogiri is the place to go for some of the best, wisest and slyest scenes from the human comedy, observer. The Painter of Signs Raman was considering giving up sign painting, the business was sinking to new levels of meanness in the town, when he meets Daisy of the family planning center. Slender, high-minded, thrillingly independent, Daisy has made up her mind to be modern and is now dedicated to bringing birth control to the people. In such circumstances, Raman's mounting, insistent passion, coupled with Daisy's determination to disregard the messy, wayward concerns of the heart, can only lead to conflict. R.K. Narayan's magical creation, the city of Malgudi, provides the setting for this wryly funny, bittersweet story of love getting in the way of progress. Since the death of Evelyn Waugh, Narayan is the novelist I most admire in the English language, Graham Greene.